In this video, I'm going to be talking about 8-9, which is called Act It Out and Use Reasoning. So 8-9 is a problem-solving lesson. Um, and the book suggests that in order to solve word problems, you use your reasoning skills, which is thinking about if things are reasonable, using your logic and things like that, and act out a problem. Now, it might not always be realistic to be acting out a problem. So I'm going to rename this section, draw it out, and use reasoning. When you're doing a math test or something like that, you might not be able to act out a problem, but it's a bit more realistic that you could grab some scratch paper and draw out the problem to help you figure out the answer. This question says, the Rodriguez family is donating 25 baseball caps to a charity auction. There are 11 blue caps. There are two more white caps than green caps. How many of each color caps are they donating? There's a lot of information here and it can be a little bit tricky to decipher and figure out just by reading this. In order to solve it, drawing a picture is going to make it a lot easier for you. The first thing I would suggest that you do though is circle any numbers within the problem. Okay, so the total is 25 baseball caps. When I draw pictures, I like to draw kind of a little map almost. Out of the baseball caps, they're split into three different categories, blue caps, green caps, and white caps. And I know that there are 11 blue caps, so I can write my answer for that and I'm good to go. Now together with the green and white caps, I had 25 and I used up 11 for the blue, so that means that together this green and white is 14. Now I know that there are two more white caps than green caps. So if there, what, however many caps there are here, there are two more over here. Okay, so I need to do a little bit of guessing and checking here to decide what would make sense so that there are two more in the white cap section, but that they add up to 14. So one good strategy for problem solving is guess and check. So I'm gonna guess and I'm gonna start with five, okay? I obviously wanna start with something that's less than 14. So I'm gonna say if there are five green caps, two more would have to be seven. Five plus seven is 12, so that doesn't work, but I'm kind of close. I'll try six. Six plus two is eight, and six plus eight is 14, so that works. So there would be 11 blue caps, six green caps, and eight white caps. And the green and white caps add up to 14, plus 11 is 25 caps in all, so that does make sense. In this problem, Mr. Niles has a toolbox, and in his toolbox he has bolts, screws, and nails. He has a total of 42 objects in the toolbox. 12 are nails, and he has four times as many screws as bolts. So we want to know how many of each object Mr. Nail Niles has, and what expression we could use to show the amount of screws he has. So I'm going to draw a picture similar to the one that I drew in the last slide. If there's another type of picture that works better for you, that's totally fine. Problem solving is all about finding out what works best for you mathematically. So this is the type of picture I like to draw, but if you wanted to do something a little bit different, that would be fine as well. Anywho, I always start at the top with the total amount of um, objects that I have. So I have 42 objects in this toolbox. And from there, I'm gonna decide how many different types of objects I have, which is three, bolts, screws, and nails. So I have 12 nails, okay, and then I have bolts and screws left to worry about. And I can find out from here how many bolts and screws I have all together because 42 minus 12 is 30. So these two combined is 30, 30 bolts and screws all together. So from there, I can kind of figure out and draw my picture here to help me decide how many screws and bolts Mr. Niles has. I know that he has four times more screws than he does bolts. So screws is four times more, okay? 
from here I could do what we did in the last problem and guess and check. Um, I could say, you know, if he has two bolts, he would have eight screws and that added together is 10, not 30. So I could keep trying from there. So that is one option. What I could also do to make it a little bit quicker is draw a little bit more to my picture here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw how a box to represent bolts, okay? It could be a box or an X or anything. And whatever's in that box, I have four times as much over here. So in all, I have five categories here that I need to fill with my 30 screws, or I'm sorry, screws and bolts together. So I have 30. So I'm gonna take my 30 and divide it by five because I've represented the amount of bolts and screws with these five boxes. So that's six. So in each box goes a six. So I have six, 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 and six. It's kind of hard to read, sorry about that. So I have six bolts and six plus six plus six plus six or 24 screws, which does work because six times four is 24. So I do have four times as many screws as bolts and six plus 24 is 30, which I found out up here is my total amount of bolts and screws put together. Now, the tricky part from here is writing the equation, or I'm sorry, the expression to show the amount of screws that he has. So I need to really just go back and kind of think about what each step, um, what were all the steps that I took in order to figure out the amount of screws. So I'm specifically just looking over at the portion that is the screws. And so I have, um, first what I did is I took 42, my total, and I subtracted 12 because that was how many um, nails there were. I'm gonna put that in parentheses because I want to make sure that I do that first. Then I took that 30 and I divided it by five. Okay. It says four times as many screws in the uh, problem, but you have to account for this group over here. So I'm not dividing it by four, I'm dividing it by five because screws has four times as much as bolts. So bolts has something and screws has four times that amount. So that in all is five groups here. So then I divided it by five but that tells me one box. Screws has four boxes. So then I took what one box is and I would multiply it by four. So here is my big long expression. To make sure that your expression is correct, you need to go back and plug in, um, well, and, and do what the expression says and see if you get the answer that you got for screws. So 42 minus 12 is 30. 30 divided by five is six, and six times four is 24. And so I did indeed get 24, the answer I was looking for. So this would be my expression. This is the last problem I'm going to show you, and it's very similar to the last one. It says a zoo displays birds in three different cages. The zoo has three types of birds, parrots, parakeets, and canaries. There are 36 birds in all, 24 are parakeets. There are three times as many canaries as parrots. How many of each type of bird does the zoo have? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and circle my numbers here. Okay, and I'm gonna draw a picture just like last time, kind of a, with um, the different branches coming off of it. So 36 is my total birds. And then I have three types of birds from there. I have parrots, parakeets, and canaries. So we'll do parrots, um, parakeets, and canaries. Okay, so it says that I have 24 parakeets, so I already know what this branch is. I'm trying to figure out something about the parrots and the canaries. So just like last time, I'm going to have to do 36 minus 24 which is 12, to figure out the total of parakeets and canaries together. Then I also know that there is three times as many canaries as parrots. So whatever I have for parrots, which again, I'm just gonna represent with a box, 
I have three times as much for the canaries. So again, at this point, I could kind of guess and check and see what works, or what I could do is I have four boxes between the parrots and canaries. So I'm gonna take 12 and divide it by four, three. So that means that each of these boxes is a three. So I would have three parrots, nine canaries, and 24 parakeets. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that that works. If I have three and a total of nine over here, three plus nine is 12, and 12 plus my 24 parakeets does equal 36. If it were to ask me also to find an expression for, let's say the canaries, Again, what I would do is I would go back and think about each step that I took to figure out the canary. So first I did 36 minus 24 because that was the amount of parakeets. Then I took that, and I'm gonna put that in parentheses so I know I did that first. What's in parentheses we always do first. Then I took that and I divided it into four groups because I had these four boxes. So it says there's three times as many um, canaries as parrots, but I have to make sure I have one group for the parrots and then three more than that for the canaries, so four in all. And then I got three and I have three boxes, again, for canaries, so I'm going to multiply that by three to tell me how many canaries I have in all. I'm going to go back and make sure that makes sense. 36 divided by 24 is 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. So I did get the amount of canaries. So if they had asked me to write an expression for canaries, it would look like this. If they asked me to write an expression for a different type of bird, it would look different. So you have to be careful and see if they are asking you to write an expression. Think about what category they want you to write the expression for. I want you to go ahead and try this problem on your own. Go ahead and read through it and draw a picture like I drew in the last few slides to help you out. If you need to go back and look at what those pictures looked like, that might be a good idea. Remember to use boxes or something of that nature to represent a situation where you have four times as many or three times as many of one group than another. Um, and then this part at the bottom, so the question is asking you how many fourth graders are on chess club, how many fifth graders are on chess club. So not together, but fourth graders and then fifth graders. And then the bottom says write an expression to show how you would find the number of fifth graders. So go back and look at the previous examples if you need to. But remember, this expression is just going to be all of the steps that you would take to find out the number of fifth graders in one long expression. You should not have a variable in this expression. Good luck, try this, draw a picture, and answer both parts, how many fourth graders and fifth graders are on chess club, and then your expression and bring that with you tomorrow. Good luck.